उपस्थित है हिशोबा मैं डॉक्टर कल्पेश कारमोड़े हमें संगत कि साहब पुख्य देवन स्वागत करते तसेज अपने कार्यक्रम वेड़ वेल का मेडिकल ऑफिसर डॉक्टर वी नागरे साहब इतने उपस्थित है तठिका स्वागत कर सीनियर मेडिकल ऑफिसर डॉक्टर देवलालकर साहब हे अपन पुष्प देवन स्वागत करू प्रभारी तालुका ऑफिसर मनु डॉक्टर राठौड़ ने बरेच वर्ष कार्यभाग सामाला पुष्प कर स्वागत करू आप शाहपुर सर्जन डॉक्टर दिनेश ढोले हे अपन पुष्पगुच्छ दे स्वागत करू निमा फैक्ट हाँ निमा फैकल्टी के सर्जन डॉक्टर अमोल खारीक हे अपन पुष्पगुच्छ दे स्वागत करू आमच निमा शाबिके आता इलेक्शन मध्य नवनिर्वाचित आमच महाराष्ट्र कार्यकारिणी सदस्य मनु विकास करपे हमें निवड़ी तठिका स्वागत करता तसे आ सर्व पाहुण्च मनापासन हार्दिक स्वागत 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 डॉक्टर बरस आहोत अपन ही आहोत पणूस मनु मैं तक जो ओखतो तो कभी न विसरने सारा है तुम फोटो है का नहीं दा वर्षापूर्वी का फोटो जर बगित आइन्स्टाइन की आठवन तुम्हारा आते ही बहुआयामी व्यक्तिमत्व है रिजनरेटिव थेरपी मधे स्वतः रिसर्च है स्टेमसेस बदल आता कि आप महती देना है मैं वे न दौड़ता अपन कार्यक्रम विज्ञान चालू कराए थैंक यू Those textbooks are all correct today. There are many sciences 
in medical science which are changing in the future. Which during the course of my talk, I'll take you on that journey. As far as my journey is concerned, I'm basically by training in a neurosurgeon was a professor of surgery and in the last six years I have been practicing in regenerative medicine. The science which I am going to tell you is the science of future science which has got cutting edge science you can say rather and it is going to give you facts of reality of basic biology which you have learned in your 12th standard or 11th standard and 10th standard where well, probably we might have forgotten what is a cell you might have forgotten what is the nucleus, what are the organelles, what are the mitochondria. Now the science speaks of all these organelles for the treatment rather. This science I call is to be a science of living drug. What is we practicing is a science of non-living drug. Non-living drug is a drug which you and me write a prescription like a paracetamol, an antibiotic or some kind of derivatives from a chemical to treat signs and symptoms of the diseases what people suffer, not the disease per se. You ever might have thought our body has got a very great healing power. We never think about it. We think, yeah, what I am giving the medicine has to heal the patient and he has to get better. But those are the false facts of our life. The real facts is that your body heals you. Today my talk will cover the what is the regenerative medicine aspect, what are the areas of regenerative medicine aspect. Regenerative medicine aspect doesn't cover up only in stem cell which I am going to talk to you today. It's a small part of that science. It covers a big umbrella. The umbrella covers up the cell concept, the stem cells, adult cells, adult stem cells, cytokines, chemokines, growth factors, then tissue engineering, genetics, molecular science, you talk of related to the biology is there. Then we'll cover the historical aspects of little bit in this science. Then we'll cover regenerative medicine, current aspects, what are we practice. I practice an experience of mine, a journey of around six years, what I have done in this science. Then what is going to be another 20 years in future, how the science is going to change. How this paradigm of health is changing from a current scenario to a scenario which is coming in the future science. This will revamp the basic of science what we are practicing today. As I was saying you, the science of living drug. A living drug is a molecule, not like a living, non-living drug, which communicates with the environment, which breathes like you and me, which Give the signals to the environment what is happening wrong in our body. This is a hypothesis during the course of my talk, I will let you know. The hypothesis says that in your body, when it is at hemostasis, hemostasis means functioning well organized with the communication of each organ to other organ at a cellular level. When the cell passes a signal to other cell, the cell knows what is the function it has to do. And this is done either by a cell direct contact or through an extracellular matrix or through a cytokine chemokine. Now if this communication is not taking place, it means the information is not being passed. And when the information is not passed, the function doesn't take place. The simple basic physiology of our body. You take out any part of our brain, you take out the heart, lung, skin, muscle, any part. If the cell to cell doesn't communicate, the function doesn't take place of the organ. If it is at a molecular level, at a small level, or microscopic level, you will not realize that there is a major tissue which is a big organ, which is making function, you will not realize. But the bulk of cells, when they don't communicate, it represents in the form of disease, where I call body as an unease and the disease is with you. When body is at an unease, the disease is with you, and in such cases, None of your molecule, any molecule which is on chemical side, allopathic side, cannot communicate to your cell what is happening wrong there. This hypothesis states that if you require to communicate at that level to correct the disease, you 
you require communication with the cell which breathes an entity which communicates which feels what is happening in the organ and that is only possible by a living cell that is why I call it the living drug compared to a non-living drug and when the living drug comes in picture the body communication establishes and an ease body will go back to ease and a disease is healed. This is the basic concept of regenerative medicine or cell science. So this journey will speak to you about understanding the what we practice as a pill taking to the therapy of cells. The journey I always call from pill to cell, which I have been writing a book on this, how the pills will replace by cells in future when we are going to look medicine as a practice. And we look this science to come as a standard medical practice, standard healthcare, standard practice. When you are writing a prescription, the prescription is called as a standard health practice or standard medical practice. Similarly, when we talk, anything which new has to come, it has to come as a standard of medical practice. And we look this science to come in future as a standard of medical practice. Nowadays, you have nothing to see most of the conferences globally go anywhere in the conference or newspapers or media, electronic media. It's always you will find some or other news regarding stem cells. In a news print media, in electronic media or in a conference, you will find one topic, somebody will talk about stem cells. It means the science is budding up in a very huge way. It is coming as a fortune for all of you. And it is going to give a guideline to understand what is going to be future for us. You take any times, you take, phones you take, CNN take or US most of the multinational companies you take, they have huge amount investments in stem cell science or biological science, which are coming as a standard medical practice and some of the products are coming as a standard approved by FDA also. Before I take you to the journey of stem cells, I would like to take you because any science which has to come as a practice, remember there are three very important things. One is the result based ground that comes from the base scientists who are experts in the science to develop in their labs. That is from the benches to bring them to the beds. That is first part of it. Second, you require a huge wealth. And third, you require a political will to bring this science to the common man. If the science doesn't reach to the common man, every science perishes otherwise. So I look this science to understand make you why I have looked like the science is going to the common man leader because the world leader speaks about I will show you some of the leaders of the world like our own Prime Minister or world leader Obama what they talk about this science. This is Stephen Hawking, the present on the earth, the most intelligent person you all be known by, by for his research of black hole theory. There is one more scientist, Robert Nandra, who is a biologist. Both are equivalently science, uh, science scientists. And what they talk about this, if you understand, what is a microscopic worker in your body, the stem cell? I have spent my life exploring the mysteries of the cosmos. But there is another universe that fascinates me. The one living inside our bodies. Universe. 
It's already research the universe with microscopic workers which are intelligent enough to know their job. Most important, you all know, you cannot place a lever in the brain and ask him to function like a brain. Can you do? Any one of you? So they are intelligent, trained, sophisticated workers doing their own microscopic job. So they are microscopic workers. So they are the small planet work in our body, what maintains the emotions of your body. Anything you lose the connectivity, the body goes in unease. So even the Hawkins, Hawkins lose that, stem cells are magic bullets of your body who are maintaining wear and tear of your body.
So looking at this story which I showed you the global leaders for one reason is that without having political will no science can progress. Because we all have a legal legislature for all the practicing licenses. They should come in a law frame to practice this science. So we look at the political leaders to bring this science in a legal frame. And looking at their views, we always have to believe that science has come in a legal field now. This is not in a rocket science. If you see, day one it has come for your practice or from the benches to the beds. It is a hundred years more plus history. You all know me knowing the Talans, who is an embryologist. This is a, he is the first embryologist who has defined and egg can define, multiply into different types of cells. An embryo can define. And thereby the science started on the benches to reach to the page. Now it's about 100 years the science has reached from bed to bed. And most important innovation has taken place in 1995 with the ship. We all know the story. is a celebrity ship. This celebrity ship was a big news with Nobel Prize. This is Wilmot, who was a scientist, and Campbell was the second, who was a role in a student in Edinburgh, which was, decided, which was the first this scientific event took place using stem cells and embryonic stem cells, that a rebirth could be done by using and cloning technology. 2006 and 2012, the two major events were this global researchers, one is Shinya Amanika and Gordon from UK and Japan. This Yamani is a fine surgeon and Gordon was a full-fledged scientist, space scientist, who were awarded the Nobel Prize for showing the reversal of biological age. Now if you see the whatever the uh, Hawkins video you have seen, we talk of the age which what your calendar is. Biological age is what is the age of the cells, that is genetic age of your body, that organ particularly. When we talk of IPSC, IPSCs are induced multipotent cells, which they have shown and skin cell, somatic skin cell, he could reverse back to an embryonic character which he labeled as an induced pluripotential having the same characters of an embryonic stem cell. So this shows that the stem cell of an adult or somatic cells of an adult can be reversed back to the biological age of embryonic stem cell. For you, I told you, you will feel a lot of what I am going to talk about in fiction stories. Nobody can believe and somatic adult cell can be reversed back to an embryo and it can generate a new life again with having the same potential of embryonic stem cell to generate 220 different types of cells or create a new life. So this was one which has given a big, big chance in this science to expect that future science is going to be changed and we can reverse the age, what we are today, back to the embryonic age or even to the early age. Now this is one thing we have to do. These are the building blocks of our body. This is an embryonic stem cell and egg going into a fertilization and fertilization leading to a first four days mass which we call it a modula. An inner cell mass getting into a differentiating different parts of mesoderm, ectoderm, endoderm. This is a nine-month journey of ours which shows how a single cell will differentiate into an entire body. This our body is composed of 150 trillion cells and one cell getting into an 150 trillion cells. Now this video which I showed was a live video showing the same fact which I am showing it here. It's my favorite slide where I explain you a lot of things of the stem cells, what are the characters of stem cell, what are the types of stem cell, what are the potencies of the stem cell, what, at what level the stem cell is an embryonic pluripotent, a pluripotent, a multipotent. Potency is a character which defines the cell's ability to differentiate into different types of specialty cells. Now if you talk of a totipotent cell up to, if you see, if you see, this is embryo which is forming up up to 3 to 4 days where it forms a morula. This morula has a ball of around 32 to 80 to 64 cells. The division here is mitotic which leads to a same character without having a reduction in the genetic module of the cell. Now these cells have a potential of protein potency. If we take individual cell of this cell and put into different uteruses, they will create a total they have a total potential of creating a total human body again. 
that is 420 types of cells. Our body has got hair to net 420 types of cells. Each cell has around the nucleus 30,000 genes. You can imagine the molecular structure of that protein. 30,000 genes in the nucleus which we cannot even see. Cell we cannot see. In the nucleus we cannot see. In that there are 30,000 genes. Each mitochondria has got 5,000 genes. And these genes as they express during the gestational period will differentiate into a speciality cells. The idea of showing is that not only to explain the embryology of these cells, but the idea is how these cells can help us to treat us. Now as the cell goes beyond 5 to 7 days, it expresses CDRX2 gene which leads to a potency of getting into extracellular mass and intercellular mass. Inner cellular remains a component which is the remain a purely potency but it has lot the potency to differentiate into total human body. Human body means extra 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 embryonic part and embryonic part. Whereas only here now embryonic part can be developed 220 types of cells. This is called the purely potency of the cells. And as we go ahead, the outer cell mass will make the placenta, cord, amniotic field, whereas inner cellular make the entire body. As the cells keep on expressing this composition leads to the formation of tissue formation. Each specialty tissue like liver, kidney, brain, with each expression of gene, these cells become specialty cells, that is fetal stem cells, we call them the fetal stem cells. Here the cells have lost the embryonic character now. We in principle we call them like adult character cells, but they lose the embryonic character they become adult stem cells. These fetal stem cells, they stay initially for the ontogenesis. Ontogenesis means differentiating into different tissues. And the next stage comes the organogenesis where these cells go in formation of different organs. Body and is such a wonderful organization. As the organs are forming, nature has made a wonderful RNA. They get connected to each other at a different position and by the time it completes 9 months, the baby is born with the full term of 2.5 kg and 25 inches. Now, the purpose of saying is that these cells are carrying multipotent cells now. They are not the pluripotent also. Multipotent means they have a potential to fit a few lineages. Not like pluripotency, 220 types of cells. Not like pluripotency where the entire body can be created. Now, the idea you should remember Anything which can generate to different organs, if the cell can make your organs, if the cell can make your body, never forget these are the only cells which can repair you. The idea of saying all this for you to make you understand in a medical language, if the cells can make your body through or this is organogenesis, never forget these are the only cells which can repair you, not any kind of chemical formulation. This is very important because they are communicating to each other, they are breathing, they are singing, they are talking, they are making signals to each other. Now once this baby is formed, the next stage comes. If you see the last figure, the last figure shows the adult baby. Last figure shows is an adult, the baby becomes an adult. Now ever we have thought, how this baby has grown up to a 6 feet and 60 kg. What was that it made? It has not made your food. It has not made you from your food. Anyone can imagine what is that which makes this baby grow from a 2 and a half kg to 60 kg. Can anyone of you imagine? This is by your stem cells during the gestational period of your baby to this baby the nature keeps the stem cell potential in the bone marrow every organ adipose tissue in different forms bone marrow carries hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cells as well as different kind of different lineage cells at different level of differentiation which play a major role for your body growing. You always know the history that a plastic anemia patient doesn't survive. Why it doesn't survive? Because bone marrow doesn't have cells. So the simple physiological logic 
If the bone marrow doesn't have cell, body cannot go. If the bone marrow is not producing stem cells, your organs will not grow. Similarly, while playing, suppose you are a child and you had a fall and you get an injury, you lose the skin, a brushing injury, a brushing injury. You go to your doctor, he will give you a pill of antibiotic and painkiller and an ointment local application. Have you ever thought any of them has healed the wound? None of that has healed the wound. At the painkiller or antibiotic, not for infection, who has healed the wound? Body has healed the wound. Like must take any organ, if it takes like hepatitis takes place, liver loses a lot of cells, what do you take? You take U52, Hepamol, do you think they are growing your liver cells? None of them are growing your liver cells. They even don't support much to liver cells to get that nutritional values to support their body, support the liver, the most fastest growing organ of the body. As the viral load goes down, the liver proliferates of its own and gets back to the normal function, that the lost function come back to the normal function. These are the few examples which I am quoting you of each organ having their own stem cells. These stem cells, in, uh, as the slide goes on, I will tell you what is the niche of each organ where the stem cells remain. This is slide which shows you protipotency, pluripotency and multipotency. As I was talking to you, there are two types of cells, embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Fetal stem cells in entirety, which is a part of a adult stem cell. But since we call them fetal because they are doing the fetal of your surgery, cancer comes with a double speed. It comes with a bouncing speed back again at a distant metastasis. Either hematopoietic, rather blood, blood, hemato, blood metastasis or a lymph metastasis or a local recurrence. But it is a known fact and as you keep on treating, cancer keeps on with double force back again. This is very important for you to understand because cancer is not formed the cancers. Cancer is formed with the cancer stem cells. This again in our conventional teaching we are never taught there are cancer stem cells. So science is changing, I told you, everything is changing as we grow beyond and the newer years are going to add from the science. Degenerative developmental congenital diseases, cerebral palsy, autism, these children remain handicapped throughout their life. Have you, any one of you can in your practice say in these conditions you could do something to your patient? I don't think, you know, I have learned from my practice that I could say this no to my many of the patients who are suffering from different activities of this which I labeled just now. And whatever research we keep on adding to this science, there is no solution. We are spending billions of dollars. We are definitely adding longer to the human life. But this aging is with the diseases of cancer, or the human diseases, as well as different kind of degenerative conditions like Parkinson, Alzheimer's disease. And these diseases add to the cost to your family, to the nation, to the people, and to the research. But there are no solutions. It is the reason this particular condition and the current scenario I call is a health crisis. We are in a health crisis where whatever billion dollar is spent, you don't have a solution. On the contrary, we keep adding complications. For to add you, these are the two simple examples of your practice, insulin, nitroglycerin, both are 100 year old medicines. Have you ever seen you have put on a patient on insulin and he's still got diabetes? Anyone of you can you say me? Anyone of you have put the patient on insulin and he's still got the diabetes? On the contrary, we are signing a certificate for him to go into a renal failure or a telepathy at the end of 20 years or 15 years or 30 years. The same patient whom you have put on insulin, to improve him, you will find coming 20 years after to you with either a CRF, retinopathy or any other peripheral neuropathy and get into your complication. Nitroglycerin, you can see 1890s and 1870s this drug has been practiced now more than 120, 150 years. Any patient who have put on nitroglycerin, have you seen he has come out of cardiac complication? He is never come out of you. On the contrary, he is adding the complications. He is buying the complications. Each day, till he comes in a cardiac failure or cardiac arrest. There are the basic two simple examples of our clinical practice which state that 
Yes, we are not adding life to the people, we are adding complications to the people's lives. Just by the complications. In spite of all these science, we are spending billion dollars on this research where there are no molecules. We do a clinical trial of thousand molecules of pharmacological. Out of that one comes to the clinical practice. Even if one comes, it leads to hundred complications. And the journey remains not less than 50 to 20 years. If you happen to understand in the current scenario, the global cost of this disease is in billion dollar, not in lakhs rupees, in a billion dollar. We spend for each type of treatment which doesn't have a solution, it doesn't cure you, but we pay thousands of dollars or lakhs of rupees for incomplete treatment and having continuation of the degeneration or deterioration of the patient. Look at this condition like heart surgery, autoimmune disease, organ failures, knee replacement, palmitic, all these things. Lot of money, but there is no cure. That is the call it to be a health crisis. A health crisis is a condition where we really fail in the management of the patient. Spending billion dollars on the research as well as thousands of rupees on the treatment. So remember, Albert Einstein once said, we can't solve the problem by using the same kind of thinking we use when we created them. It means we created this science 100 years before. If we continue putting money in the same science, this science will never bring a solution to that practice or to that technology. We need to think parallelly. What is that which can bring this science? We have to think out of box and need a parallel science which will have a Limitations to the poor therapy where we can overcome the limitations of the poor therapy which I spoke. Then no longer medical science has remained the domain of medicine clinicians. Remember this always I quote in every talk of mine. Science has not remained as a domain. Medical science has not remained the domain of only clinicians and physicians. If in the future any clinician who has to be successful, he has to go hand in hand go with the base scientist of biology. So that a newer protocols can be developed and the therapies can be developed for all these incurable conditions. And this leads to a gradual expectancy of life. This increase in expectancy of life should be a very healthy, gracious aging, not the ailing aging which we spoke. These are certain events which are to bring to your science notice that body has got a 100% healing power. This is a couch being beaten by a fish. And when a fish bites through a cow, it loses either an eye or a wing or whatever is there. But within two weeks time, the eye regenerates completely as an animal there. This shows that body has a complete regeneration power in the preview lights. Similarly, if you see salamander, if you see the salamander, it has lost its leg. And within three weeks time, this salamander regenerates the leg completely. You can see the way he expresses the pain of losing the leg and the when he regenerates the leg, you will see the expression of happiness and he can swing and live a normal life. This indicates the primitive animals do have the power of regeneration. We as a human being have lost that power of regeneration for the cost of specialization because we are supposed to be the highest evolved human animals on the earth with having the neocortex of the brain which is the recent evolution of complete our body. If you see the, our body evolution, our cortex is the neocortex which is a recent evolution. If you go few thousand years before, our cortex was very small. Where our intellectual level not matching today's. Then it was different, today is different. As we evolve our body, we lost the regeneration power and retain only repair powers. You can see the salamander is regenerating the leg. The purpose of showing all these basic science videos for you is to understand it is an instinct nature gift to your body to regenerate the cells which are dying. If the cells are not regenerated or replaced by the stem cells, you perish. You perish means you die. It's so simple equation of the life. If there are no stem cells in your body, you die. 
that's all intuition I can say you because as the sequence of stem cells go down in your body, you reflect your aging process. So I call them to be microscopic workers, very intelligent, defined to do their own job. They also die, but the death is replaced by stem cells. When we saw all these, what are the stem cells? What are the types of stem cells? How do they function for us? Which are the parts of our body which has got stem cells? Every part of your body from hair to nail has got stem cells. In every organ, those are the adult multipotent stem cells having potency to differentiate that specific organs, specific tissues. Now if you see what are, how we can use the stem cells for various therapies, if you see eye, you can use it like, you can use the skin, bones, heart, lung, liver, brain, pancreas. You talk of an organ and that degeneration or development part of those organs could be used, uh, could be treated by using stem cells. In fact, to make you understand how I started my clinical practice in Vegetative medicine of stem cell therapy. It is a journey of around four to five years. When we started, we started with one or two diseases, and today I have a list of 80 different type of conditions where you assured result for treating all those conditions of science where we click in the conventional method, we give up and say okay, we cannot treat these conditions. And these are total autologous. Further, I forgot to mention you the therapy we divide into an autologous treatment and allogenic treatment. Autologous means of your own body. Cells derived from your own body. When we use the cells from other sources like cord, cord tissue or even from other embryonic stem cells, we call them to be allogenic stem cells. This is an example of your injury of your body. What happens when you get an injury? I'll just show you what happens to you. A tissue injury leads to hemorrhage and clotting. Inflammatory cells infiltrate, cell in fibroblasts, debris are removed by macrophages. It leads to a new host ECM deposition, extracellular matrix is deposited. ECM organizes in formation of scar takes place and ultimately tissue repair takes place with a scar formation. The purpose of doing this all basic science for you to understand this is a molecular biology which leads to healing process. Suppose like in salamander or a starfish or a pouch, the regeneration power is there, there is no repair power in that. Tissue directly regenerates without an inflammatory reaction. Inflammatory reaction takes place in mammals, particularly human beings and is to higher in animals, but not in primitive animals. In those animals, reptiles and all those, the tissue regeneration is a basic reaction without inflammation. Now even in this case, if the inflammatory reaction is removed and replaced by healing centers like stem cells at that level or macrophages 2, macrophage 1 and macrophage 2, that is a polarized macrophage 2 or IL2 like component, at this level the inflammatory reaction will not take place and the tissue will stop repair, will regenerate. Like there are a lot of scientists who are working globally on this area, how we can overcome a repair into a regeneration. As I was mentioning you, when you are born, you are full of a stem cells and I told you as you grow older, the number of stem cells decrease in your body. This means number of decreasing stem cells in the body indicate that you are growing older. You are growing older. Now, as we are born, we are 100% full of stem cells because body has to grow. It has to grow to the adult stage. Now, every species has got its own age. Every species has got its own age. If you see human species, human species of the age of maturity is 16 to 20 years. If you go to dog species, cat species, the progeny, uh, progeny age is around two and a half years, three years, and then they can go into gestation. If you still go to primitive animals, the progeny ages are smaller. Then the formula which we define multiply this multi uh, maturity age into six to eight, you will get the life expectancy of that species. Now, in, as per the human species, human species are supposed to live for 120 years, but because of our lifestyle problems, we are reduced to 70 years, 35 years. Now, if you see this graph which shows you 
as we as we grow older as we grow older the number of stem cells go down at 30 years it is said that around 30 to 40 million cells are in circulation as we grow older this number of cells will go down and down and down ultimately where the dying adult cells are not replaced by stem cells and the tissue grow older and older because the young cells are not there the older cells become more and younger cells become less so as every organ becomes like aging every organ becomes aged there are some of the examples in my practice where this is one of the patient who has got a diabetic ulcer or topic ulcer you could say rather who, it was not healing and had been to last six years to different places for healing purpose and it never healed and it remained as it is whereas when we started working on this patient now when I talk a protocol or a therapy to a patient using stem cell, using stem cell it means it's a personalized customized protocol it's not like a generalized protocol now when we talk of a generalized protocol you get in your clinic your patient all of you prescribe one medicine paracetamol to all of them malaria all of the medicine and bacterial infection all of them with antibiotics these are called the generalized medicines generalized medicines as a prescription to the all diseases in a same fashion whereas when we talk of personalized customized now when I talk of stem cell science or therapy, it means the science of customized medicine, personalized medicine, depending on the age of the patient, grade of the patient, morbid conditions of the patient, which will give you an idea what number of cells are to be. That lot of standardization is required in this kind of therapy. Lot of workup is required to total the morbid condition. Now if this was a normal wound, it would heal in seven to eight days. Because there is a morbid condition of clotting like or diabetes like or Hansen's like, the wound doesn't heal. It's simple like these added conditions make the condition more deteriorated and we call them non healing wounds. And whatever the science you use, these wounds never heal. They require the change in concept of treatment that the personalized, customized treatment, getting your own body cells which can communicate to the tissue. Yes, what is less there? Which type of healing factor is there? Which is BGO, like vasodilatory growth, the endothelial cells, which are less there? And create that kind of environment which will reject the newer tissue and heal the ulcers. Now, this was one which we were healed using a platelet is called straight from the peripheral blood and stromal vascular factor from the adipose tissue. And this wound healed up in seven days. This is again a gangrene, if you can see that the gangrene, if anybody would have gone, the first first photograph if you see, you would have gone for amputation. You would have gone for amputation. Now this also diabetic patient recovered in 3 to 4 weeks time with a normal food which could be salvaged. Otherwise in a condition or conventional practice, at the end of 1 month or 2 month you would have gone for vasculopathy, neuropathy and gangrene and ultimately amputation of the food but the science of regeneration makes a lot of changes in the aspect again number of cells to be used route of transport how route of transplant how are you going to transplant the cells is also a very important subject where how we are going to give the cells to this patient what type of cells are to be used at what level the cells are to be the morbid condition to be considered now this lady is a birth patient of 80 percent burn this specific photograph i am showing you for a reason if you see the neck part is a deep bird scar, you can see deep bird scar. If a normal conventional method could have used, this lady would have developed a scar with cicatrix. The neck would have been fixed to the chest. The hands, similarly deep axillary bones, would have been fixed to the body. And one hand handicap would have produced with disfigurement and she would have lost the job. This lady was an employee of a state electricity board. Now she is working on the same job back, 80% work, going back to the same work with normal movements. This is again a science of rejective medicine. We used here again fibroblast, we used stromal vascular fracture, bone marrow cells, and peripheral concentrate from the platelets. All these were made into a different combination along with the collagen sheet and they were used for the dressing for this own and recovered not more than 
30 days time. 30 days she was back on the job. This is the science of medicine, with and medicine. What is power you can imagine? Where conventional science cannot do, everything can be done by using stem cell science or legitimate science. Now this again a recent patient of last month. You can see the face of the patient day 1 and day 28. See the recovery. Which conventional method would have healed him back to such a wonderful recovery. The, all this is the science of preventive medicine. Used again a combination of same type of cell. No closure dressing. These dressings we don't close. They remain open with application of these kind of gels prepared from platelets, fibroblast, stomach vascular factor or bone marrow concentrate and apply directly on the face where the wounds are not healing. It generates the new tissue, it stimulates the epithelium to grow and the results are in front of you. What kind of results you get, you can understand. Elephantiasis. In entire our medical education, have you ever seen anybody treating elephantiasis? Never in the history. Never in the history. Ultimately, patient goes to amputation with non-ending ulcers. Seriousing out cloths in the street and smearing out legs, ultimately application. Now, in this patient, using this kind of growth factors and cells will help to generate the new lymphatic channels, new capillaries in the fibrotic tissue. Whereas, this will establish the recirculation of the lymphatic tract, the tissue regenerates. And you can see at the end of two to three weeks, you can see the condition of the leg of the patient. It has become normal. This person now attends the office. Some of them over a period of time, some of them maybe a year's time. 
but definitely it can reverse the diseases which otherwise no science can do. This encolytic part is the collagen two type of disease in our body where antibody set up in a chronic inflammation in this tissue but with the spine, collateral ligaments along the disc. Then again, once chronic inflammation sets in, the patient starts with the symptoms of having spastic pains in the back which you put them on exercise and painkiller for a year or two then gradually this gets calcified like syndesmophytes around the spine and the bamboo becomes strong and straight no movement and no science is there which can move them back now there's a specialized protocol for this to be designed in such a way where the spine gets mobilized necks which are fixed it starts moving neck at the towards the joint which is required for flexion movement lateral movement are done by other joint but flexion is not stuck at the joint which is the base of the brain the uh, base of the skull, uh, skull which is fixed up now now we even mobilize that joint and this we give result on the table it's a green pretty frog it starts moving the neck and these patients most first part become their chest becomes like a barrel a fixed barrel they start breathing in the abdomen Abdomen takes only 30% of the breathing capacity of your lungs. And imagine he climbs one floor, he starts hopping. He starts hopping. His posture gets compressed. And ultimately these patients cannot climb one floor even. On the table you will find his start, chest starts moving. Going from a barrel to a movement like which is a normal chest. As I was mentioning you when I was talking about autoimmune diseases, type 1 diabetes I mentioned you. You remember small children having multiple pricks of insulin three times a day, four times a day, four times a day, and take a small blood sample to take the blood levels, whose HbA1c remains more than 12 or 10 and 11. His average sugar remains more than 253 and 8. By the age child comes to 20-22 years, he will come with the picture of either retinopathy or nephropathy. You can imagine the sorry picture of the small child and no medicine can treat them. The disease is here of autoimmune origin, antibodies who are destroying the beta cells. Whatever you do, even you transplant the beta cells, they will be destroyed by the antibodies. No science can treat them till you deal with antibody production in the body. Till you help out to treat the T reg cells of these patients. Once you stop the antibody formation, body has got its own potential to regenerate the tissue as I was mentioning you. Pancreas will regenerate the beta cells automatically. People have been transplanting pancreas. People are talking about transplanting beta cells. What do you do? Nothing can succeed. If you remove the cause, that is when I said you, these are living drugs, they communicate, they breathe, they give a signal to the tissue what they want and they do a repairing job that. In this, in this patient, if you use some kind of treatments which can change the autoimmune states of the body and body is strong producing antibodies, patient doesn't require insulin for the lifetime. Now this is one of the child which was named by Doria. Now this boy was in Singapore when he suffered from ketoacidosis and was hospitalized suddenly. They had been on our vacation there, his family, and the child went in ketoacidosis suddenly without anything happening and they had to rush to the hospital, they took the insulin therapy there, they took three atopical ketoacidosis of the child and shipped it to India. After knowing about me, they reached to me. And this is the result what we have given him at the end of three months. But if you see, C peptidase is a marker for insulin. C peptidase is a marker for insulin in the body, beta cells, which produce insulin. Now, insulin is not produced means C peptidase is not produced. If C peptidase is produced means insulin is being produced. Now once we prove with this child the antibodies like CAR antibody, insulin antibodies, IL-XL antibodies, 
they come down in the fever which are high level and sleep appetite starts increasing. This is a proof which shows that type 1 diabetes can be reversed by using stem cell therapies or cell based therapies. I was just discussing few of you colleagues like some orthopedic conditions. These orthopedic conditions in case of stem cells they have a very wonderful response. You, one of them is obesity because of fumarate in young age. You can understand the age at which the disease starts you is around maybe 20s, 25, 30. And patient has to go for a hip replacement surgery. A replacement of the surgery which is done by a joint which has got a life of not more than 10, 12 years. Life expectancy 70, 75 years. Imagine at 25 you are replacing the joint and you want to live for 75 years. How many surgeries do you require? Minimum 3? At least minimum 3 to 4 surgeries they require to keep you mobile. Have you ever thought, can this necrosing head could be re-established by developing a new vascularization and new osteocytes and cartilage cells? and get into a new structure of the hip joint back to normal without surgery. This is one of the patents which we have recently put in India as well as international where we have proved a skew-conductive potential of bone marrow cells. Because bone marrow, you cannot forget, is an integral part of the bone. It is then one organ. Bone marrow and bone are one organ. Every tissue in the body is being replaced. Likewise, bone in your body is totally replaced with joint replacement. These are three areas where joint replacement is a commonly being practiced particularly hip joint, knee joint and shoulder joint could be saved as such a normal joint without losing the anatomical structure, without losing the anatomy of the joint and function and the same joint could be maintained for the lifetime. Osteoarthritis, if you see, the joint before treatment and joint after treatment. For all these patients, we have considered individualized customized protocols. Where when I talk of individualized customized protocol, it means we do consider patients age. It plays very important role, as I told you, as you grow older, the number of stem cells in the body are reduced. So we need to consider the cell component, what number of cells are to be used. We require a very standardization procedure for all these things. What type of cells are to be used and what level are to be used. Then we need to consider the morbid conditions like obesity, hypothyroidism, diabetes, chronic failure. They affect the healing process of the body. So accordingly we have to consider the components of the cells and number of treatments. And the mode of delivery of the cells is equally the grade of the disease. Depending on the grade, we also decide the mode of delivery or transplanting the cells. If the grades are more, we require more number of cells and more number of treatment. As well, delivery of the component of the cell should be to the target organs.
That is why we call them the developmental stage. When we chant them purely, you are baat langre langre ka, saare langre ka, bolay langre ka. This indicates development of different centers connecting to each other. Now, if the centers are not connected to each other, the communication doesn't take place, and those particular functions of the brain are affected. When we call cerebral palsy, means the brain is deprived of oxygen supply. At the time of birth, maybe whatever the reason may be, he may be caught around the neck, maybe asphyxia, maybe swallowing something, maybe not trying at the birth because of whatever the reason may be there. As Agha's program is very poor, and the centers which are developed but they are not connected to each other because the myelin sheath develops after the birth, not within the gestational age. Now this myelin sheath makes the development of the neural fibers to connect to each other. And now, if the child affects the oxygen supply at this age, this leads to cerebral palsy. It does mean cerebral palsy, non-functional parts of the brain, depending on the part of the brain which is affected, whether it is a motor area, whether it is a cognitive behavior area, whether it is a intelligence area, whether it is specialty functions like vision, hear, anything sensory area, those parts are affected and we call it to be a cerebral palsy. Now, when in such cases, we have to have two understandings. Why this has taken place? Because lack of oxygen has taken place. Lack of oxygen taken place has not allowed the myelin sheet to develop and connect to different centers through their exons. It's a simple, there are four types of in the brain. Only you have to work on these four types of brain, neuron, folliculator site. Folliculator will play a major role for developing myelin sheet. Now, in during this period, any time from birth, intrauterine or up to four years of his life, any kind of hypoxic injury because of infective, traumatic, lead or anything leads to hypoxic injury to the brain. And in such patients, if you create an environment because of which the tissue has damaged, tissue has damaged due to the lack of oxygen, let's create an oxygen environment in the brain which is beyond or breathing capacity, we breathe 60-70% oxygen. Let us take, we give our child 100% oxygen. We breathe oxygen as per atmospheric pressure. Suppose we decide to give oxygen at 2 atmospheric pressure, 2 and a half atmospheric pressure and 100% oxygen. We are reaching to the brain with liquid, double the level of oxygen level, so that to reach the tissues, more oxygen, one. And at the second time, what we do in addition to this, we, I call it to be sandwich therapy. Sandwich therapy means the tissue which is damaged is in between the two areas of supplement treatments. One is oxygen and second is neurotrophic factors, nerve progenitor cells, mesenchymal stem cells, mononuclear cells, all these of cells which are developable cells in the body, which help to develop the oligodendrocytes properly and develop the connections between the brain. The moment the connections are developed, the child takes up the function. I have seen child, this girl, one year, two months, the youngest girl in India or other world which was treated using stem cells with myosynthetic sandwich therapy is going normal now. Otherwise, this child had lost the hero. And the earlier the treatment you start, better the result. And because during the developmental phase, different states are still developing, new centers are still developing, my is still developing. We just assist the healing process using stem cells to the children. There is an entity which is called as empty nose syndrome. I don't know any one of you are practicing GNT or anybody who knows. There is a complexion which is called as after telconectomy or DNA surgeries or polyp resections or hypertrophic uh, hypertrophic pelvic resections. My name is Patrick and uh, I'm from Australia. I have empty nose. I'm uh, in India now with Dr. Mahajan. I've received uh, two rounds of stem cells and I'm feeling much better. My symptoms have improved a lot.
we seem to think this is an unknown anxiety in a medical practice. If you happen to see this patient by an EAT, if you see this patient, you would say he is a psychiatric patient. Because the nose room cavity remains very wide. After the resection of turbinate or septum or hypertrophic tissue there, the healing takes place by formation of the scar. And scar doesn't have nerve ends. Normally our turbinates are grown up in such a way where the air currents are created where the humidification of the air takes place, the sensory nerve growth factors are depleted by the nerve turbinates and maintain the nerve ends, nerve receptors so that the pressure changes taking place outside can be perceived with the brain. When you breathe in, you realize that we are breathing. Now once the receptors are not there, there you breathe as much as you want, the brain doesn't get sensations of that you are breathing in. Basically hollowness comes in. Patient feels he is not breathing, but he is breathing. It leads to a psychiatric problem of her. He feels I am suffocating. He feels I am suffocating. But he breathes it like it leads to lack of concentration, hypertension, and patient becomes a psychiatric problem. And he starts from pole to pillar to different doctor, ending up his life with suicidal tendencies. He cannot sleep in the night. This is a known entity called as empty nose syndrome. Empty means it's a hollowness in the nose. Now what is more important in such patients? Can we regenerate the turbinate? Can we regenerate the mucosa? Can we regenerate the nerve ends? Can we regenerate the capillaries? So as patient gets back the sensations of breathing, sensations of pressure changes, sensations of secreting the mucosal membrane, the mucus secretion, the nose, which keep the moistness of the air and clear the currents by the breathing and also filters the dust particles. We lose all this in this patient and most wonderful part, yes we can do that. We need this job for him for a period of 15 days to 3 weeks and he's an Australian guy from Patrick from Sydney. Now he's enjoying his life as a normal person who has lost the job, who has lost the family because of this nose problem. And no science can treat all these conditions. recent advances and which the stem is will be launching by another one or two months in India to treat all lymphomas, myelomas, leukemias, any type of blood cancers in the children can be treated using CAR T cell technologies. Then T cell depletion, T cell educators, T rex cell therapies for autoimmune disease like diabetes type 1 as I spoke to you. Then in case of transplant where GVHD, the torment rejection takes place, the T-cell depletion technology can be using this cell, using this and we can be do. T-cell rate therapies, adipose, T-cell adipose adaptive therapies can be done. 
This is our center, which I'll just take a small round for you. This is our center new, which is developed as FDA approved center for manufacturing these type of cells in Andheri at Seven Hills on third level. It's just to understand what type of facilities are required to make stem cell therapies. This is a GMP approved lab having the uh, GMP grade was plus this is also an Form 29 FDA approved for manufacturing of the test stem cells. This is classified with the dust particles class 10,000 labs. There are different parts of the lab which are very important components for cell manufacturing. We require a lot of different kind of incubators, then hoods, cell isolators, centrifuges, cell counting measures. I was specially invited to the President of India to talk on the cancer DCNK cell therapies with different leaders in stem cell and Nobel laureates. This is during my training program in the US at Ohio State University. This is my certificate of training by OS University. Now by this time, cellular, this stem cell has done, uh, STEMRX has done more than 4,000 patients treated. It's right now a leader in therapeutic applications of stem cells. We have our trained level staff, we have PhD, MSc programs and uh, fellowship programs for the students who want to do pursue the career in this as a new line of education or career. Currently working on different research projects. Now, hope and dream for stem cells. We live in a time where the words impossible and solvable are no longer the part of scientific community's vocabulary. Each day we move closer to the trial that we just don't minimize the symptoms of disease and injury but eliminate them. Christopher Reeve, you are aware of this Superman who died in 2005, has a great hope in stem cells because of spine fracture he was paralyzed but he did donated his entire earnings for the research of stem cells and he hoped that one day stem cells will treat all these diseases. Unfortunately, he died in 2005 before the stem cells come into clinical practice. But he left the legacy of stem cell for all of us to benefit in the form of to heal our bodies. Ultimately, beyond hope, we, as we constantly try towards the future, we find technology and scientific breakthroughs move us towards a direction that was never imagined. The ongoing discovery of stem cell treatment has given a rise to a new alternative technique of treatment and a new way to control our lives. Stem cell therapy has emerged as one of the most exciting and powerful gift tools in biological science today. Advancement in the stem cell therapy will give us ability to manage our wellness so we can live a fuller and healthier life with a new hope. The journey through stem cell treatment is an exciting one as it would enable us to help live more our dreams healthier. And thank you.